Hey guys, in today's video I would like to talk about turbo lag, what causes it and how we can reduce it. Now, what is turbo lag? Basically, when you floor the acceleration, there is a delay, a small delay, it varies from 0.5 to over 2 seconds depending on the engine. Uh, there is a delay before you feel the peak power, the peak torque of the engine. It's really annoying, but in any turbocharged engine, we have to experience lag. Now, let's discuss about the lag factors. The first and one of the most important factors of lag is the size of the turbine. If we have a small turbocharger, it will uh, build pressure a little bit faster compared to a bigger one, so lag will be smaller. That's why in twin turbocharged gasoline engines we have a smaller turbo and a bigger turbo which work sequentially. At low RPM the smaller turbo kicks in and at higher RPM when we need more pressure the, high, the bigger turbine kicks in. Another important factor is engine RPM. Let's say if we have 1500 RPM and we floor the acceleration we will have a higher delay, a higher lag if we would floor the acceleration at let's say 4000 RPM. So having a higher RPM will help us build pressure within the turbine much faster. Also the engine size. Having a bigger engine will result in having more exhaust gases. So if we have more exhaust we will we could build pressure within the turbine much faster. I actually experienced this in a 1.3 diesel engine with an inline 4 configuration. It was so small and the turbine was also small. If I floored the acceleration, I experienced around 2 seconds of lag, which is a lot in my opinion. Also the number of turbochargers, if we have a twin turbo system, a three turbo system like in the BMW, uh, we have three turbochargers with three different sizes and each of them works sequentially at different RPM ranges. So if we have a twin turbo system, we will experience a smaller delay, we will have a smaller lag. And of course the fuel type. I have noticed that in gasoline engines, turbo lag is slightly smaller compared to diesel. Now keep in mind, if you want to have the best possible throttle response, the smallest delay in a production car, you will need to have a naturally aspirated engine or at least a supercharged engine. And now I would like to discuss a little bit about older generation turbochargers and turbocharging systems. We have fixed geometry turbocharging systems found in older generation cars such as the Volkswagen Vento or Yetta which has a 1.9 turbocharged diesel engine and it doesn't have an intercooler. If you don't have an intercooler, lag will increase and the overall power output of the engine will also decrease. I have actually experienced this. I have driven a Mercedes E300D from 1997 with a 3 liter inline 6 diesel engine with a turbocharger but without an intercooler. In the morning when it was colder, lag was smaller, the power output was great, the car felt great to drive but in the afternoon when it, there were like 35-40 degrees celsius lag increased and it didn't feel that powerful anymore. Uh, the highest lag that we can see is in uh, older generation turbochargers with fixed geometry. This was the first generation of turbocharged diesel engines so at that time no intercooler and no advanced technology. After that we can see variable geometry turbochargers. My dad actually has a 1.9 TDI turbocharged diesel engine with pump unit injectors. He has a variable geometry system and lag is around 0.8 to 1 second after you floor the acceleration. Uh, so lag is lower compared to fixed geometry and you have even more power at low RPM. That was the main purpose of switching to fixed geometry to variable geometry, increasing the power output at the low RPM range. B-turbo engines use two identical turbochargers to reduce lag and also to have more power. Sometimes it's not wise to use a huge turbine, it's even better to use two smaller identical turbochargers to achieve the best results. In smaller engines or in twin turbo engines, I didn't mention it over here. In twin turbocharged engines, as I mentioned earlier, there is a smaller turbocharger and a bigger turbocharger and they work eventually at different RPM ranges. Also, we can see even three or four turbochargers in production cars. 
the BMW M550X drive has a 3 liter turbocharged diesel engine with 3 turbochargers. Also, the latest 7 series has 4 turbochargers with 400 horsepower out of a 3 liter. This engine, in my opinion, won't last too long, so if I had the money to buy a 7 series, I wouldn't buy the diesel engine with 4 turbochargers. I would probably buy one with one or two turbochargers but with four it's too much it's very expensive to maintain over time and reliability is reduced 400 horsepower out of a three liter diesel engine is just too much in my opinion also the bugatti veyron and chiron have four turbochargers on an eight liter w16 engine with 16 cylinders in a w layout in this kind of engines with three four turbochargers lag is small we have around 0.4 to 0.5 seconds delay before the we fill the maximum power and we have another more interesting turbine the twin scroll or twin power turbo technology from bmw they have the lowest lag in an engine with one turbocharger basically they are splitting the main inlet valve into two sides one is closed at lower rpm it helps the turbine to build pressure faster and at higher rpm the other half is opened to increase pressure and to increase the amount of air forced into the cylinders to increase power and torque all new bmws have this system even diesel engines and gasoline engines both have twin power turbo that's why if you purchase a bmw you will see the twin power turbo logo on your engine cap it has the lowest cost you have one turbocharger with uh, which behaves as if you had two turbochargers and it delivers a great performance so this would be my thoughts about turbo lag if you have any further questions please leave them down below thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already for more car videos and i'll talk to you guys in the next one